Hey besties, I'm Gabby and welcome, welcome back if you're a subscriber. Today I'm going to be starting a new reading vlog. This time I'm going to be reading some romance books, but more specifically, I'm going to be reading romance books that feature writers as the main characters. Let's go. I started reading this one. I'm 75 pages in. This is The Roughest Draft by Emily Wiverly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This, I think, just got released this past January. It is about a writing duo that wrote two books that were like massively popular, but then they separated. So when the story begins, they haven't spoken to each other in like four years. They haven't co-authored anything together and one of them i think that guy whose name is nathan nathan's book gets passed up so his only option to continue writing to get the interest from the publishers is to uh once again restore his writing partnership with katrina who is the other main character and katrina hasn't written anything since they authored their last uh his book she really doesn't want to get back together with nathan and write another book there's just like this question as to what happened between these two why it is that they stopped writing together when things were really looking up for them as a writing duo so as the book progresses and these two are forced to um get together again and write another book we start to see what it is that happened between them that drove them apart that's basically the um chapter where i'm at i'm on chapter 12 enjoying this one so far i mean i think the writing style is not my favorite maybe because this started with the characters already knowing each other and just kind of having this difficult history it just kind of feels that this is not going to be like your super cute and adorable romance i don't know if it's going to be sad or heart-wrenching those are kind of like the vibes i'm getting so far it's definitely a more serious vibe i usually don't mind that but i don't know i don't know if it's maybe the style of writing that i'm not fully clicking with so far but i guess we'll see as i keep reading this one i also have here what if you and me by ronnie lauren this is also about a main character the writes i believe horror the main character in this one is andy lockley and she works as a horror novelist and true crime podcaster i think this is going to be a fun one i've definitely never read a book about someone that writes horror at least i don't think the next one i have here is seven days in june by tia williams and i do believe this one is about two authors and they had a thing like a fling a while ago they spent seven days together and years later they're gonna come back together and those feelings are going to resurface this one just sounds very intriguing since the first moment i read the synopsis it just totally grabbed my attention so i've been waiting for the right moment to read this one i'm back with a little update on how my reading of the roughest draft is going this afternoon i hit page 115 i'm on chapter 20 and it's been getting significantly better this wasn't like my favorite romance book so far we meet these characters they have all this history and for circumstances that you come to know in the book basically they have to go back to write this third book because it was in their contract i think they go on this retreat i think to florida so they can really hunker down and write we do get some flashbacks to the last time that they wrote together which i think was like four years prior through those flashbacks we're gonna see what it is that happened between them that caused this huge rift and the reason why they hadn't spoken in so long and they hadn't worked together even though as a co-writing duo they were really profitable and were making waves in the publishing world i think that premise sounds amazing that's why i picked this up but um i wasn't really feeling it for some reason like something about the narration style and more specifically the guys pov for some reason i just wasn't into it i wasn't really enjoying this as much as most of the other romance books that i've been reading lately so it was just kind of like a bummer but i decided to just push through this morning early afternoon i was reading this and really getting into it something that i think that in my case would have made this better is if instead of 
looking at them in the present for the most part and only going back for a couple of chapters if the story had started in the past getting to know them as they were writing this book that became huge for them seeing what it is that went wrong between them i think that i would have enjoyed it more that way like i'm so curious about the kind of relationship that they used to have what it is that split them up that i feel like just getting these brief glimpses into the past and what the relationship was like back then is not enough for me like i would have loved if that had been where the story kicked off i do have to say that i do enjoy katrina's pov a lot more than nathan i took a little break from listening to the audiobook so that i could eat something and while i was doing that i was watching uh euphoria because i finally jumped onto the euphoria train so i decided to take you know like a little break from reading while i ate to start with episode two <laughs> advanced a couple more chapters now while i was doing my puzzle i think i stopped right now at chapter 25 like i said before it's gotten a little bit better but i think i have identified one of the main reasons why i don't think i've really gotten fully invested into this book and that is because i feel like this couple has no chemistry i really like them as writing partners and i've enjoyed reading about them in the past when they were more friendly and on better working terms than in the present even though they're doing better but i just don't think they have any romantic chemistry it's hard for me to see them together in this way so i feel like i'm not really rooting for this couple the way that i do for other couples and other romance books the story is intriguing i mean i still want to finish the book but yeah that is like one major thing that is currently missing for me so let me show you how far i've advanced on my puzzle making when it comes to puzzles i am not the greatest i get frustrated easily then i end up just usually never completing them this is 500 pieces so i think i've been able to complete puzzles that are like 100 or 200 pieces basically puzzles for children but you know i'm gonna try my hardest i'm gonna keep listening to the audiobook of the roughest draft as the day goes on so far 40 percent of the way into this one they Hey friends, I'm just popping in on a Tuesday to do a little bit of an update on this reading vlog. I hadn't filmed a sit down update since Friday. In that particular update, I do remember saying that I was hoping to be done with the roughest draft that day. But, you know, I'm obviously still reading it. I am currently on page 231. So I would say about 70% into this book and I'm glad to report that it has gotten a lot better because I do remember saying last week that I just felt like I wasn't really getting along with this book, vibing with the MCs and the story, but it does, it has gotten a lot better and I am kind of invested now to see what's going to happen. There was a scene where the two main characters, the two writers go to a club and something kind of starts to happen between them and I thought that was pretty hot. So yeah, I'm coming around to this couple. They do in fact have some chemistry whereas before i was like this couple has no chemistry i cannot get myself to care about them but yeah i'm slowly making a 180 and getting on board with this today i am currently sitting down i 
have planned to finish reading this you know that's the plan i don't know if it's actually gonna happen but i'm currently tuned in to the reading sprints on naomi's channel from naomi's library that is my plan for the evening Hey friends, so I haven't vlogged much at all today. In fact, I don't think I have vlogged anything. This is the first time in the day that I'm picking up the camera. It is 8 o'clock at night and I am almost finished with the roughest draft. I had a little bit of reading time today. I joined SAP's reading sprints. I'm like 20 pages away from finishing it. I'm about to start dinner now. I know this might seem like it's way too late to be having dinner at eight o'clock, but I don't know, for some reason, like we're just always behind on our meals. So yeah, today we're gonna have dinner later than usual. And while I do that, I'm gonna pop my AirPods in and listen to this audiobook so that I can finally finish this book. So far, I think I'm gonna give this three stars. Things could change, but realistically, I think that is the way my reading is gonna go because my overall reading experience with this book hasn't been the best. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with the book. I just feel like I didn't really connect with the characters and I don't feel as invested as I have with all the other romances that I have read. Things did get slightly better when I hit about halfway, um, the halfway point of the book. And I did start enjoying this a lot more, enjoying the couple, kind of rooting for them, but it's just, I'm just not like fully invested in the story and what's going to happen. Basically, I'm just gonna finish it because I'm already way into this book and yeah just because curiosity i want to know what ends up happening guess where i'm at besties yeah i had to make that starbucks run i just got out of a therapy appointment and i have to run a couple errands what's new <laughs> i think running errands is what i do in every single reading vlog i'm gonna go drop off a package then i'm gonna go to alta because i need to pick up the heat protectant spray i don't know if that's what it's called that i use for my hair because i'm out <laughs> I put on my sunglasses because I look wrecked. Um, as always, I was running late for my appointment, so I didn't have time to like do my hair, do my makeup, you know, the whole thing. I finished reading The Roughest Draft this morning. I just had like a little bit last night. I was reading it, but I was so tired. I just fell asleep listening to the audiobook. And I just had one last chapter to finish, the epilogue by Katrina, you know, cause this, the main characters are Katrina and Nathan and the very last chapter was from Katrina's POV. It was an epilogue three months later. And yeah, I'm definitely gonna stick with my three star rating that I was telling you guys about yesterday. This was just not my favorite. I really wanted to love it. Like I haven't read many romance books featuring writers as main characters but since i love reading and writing i just figured you know and i love the romance genre i just figured it was gonna be a favorite i think i said this when i started reading this book like in the first update that i wish the timeline would have been different like instead of seeing them in the present and going back you know in a couple of chapters to see how it was that their working relationship and just like their friendship got messed up i wish we would have seen this timeline play out differently like we would have started way at the beginning when they met in this writer's workshop and decided to start writing together and then have like the conflict maybe in the middle where they stop talking to each other for a while and then and they find their way back to one another later on in life that is one of the major things that didn't really work for me like if it would have been the other way around like a more linear timeline i think i would have enjoyed this a lot more hey besties it is saturday night and i am just chilling at home 
on the couch with a little glass of wine shout out to my bestie who got me these glasses i believe last time i saw you i had finished reading uh the roughest draft and i rated that three stars it was just okay since then i've started what if you and me by ronnie lauren i think i started this on thursday in this one i've only gotten 50 something pages in 55 pages in today i was listening to a little bit of this on libro fm so far i'm liking it um i definitely like this author's style of writing a lot more than the roughest draft and the premise is interesting this is about a woman named andy she is a horror writer and also hosts a podcast she has just moved into a new apartment and when the book begins she is saying how she thinks her neighbor is a werewolf because he's up at weird hours of the night and he's like super noisy it definitely caught my attention since the first page the other pov is the main guy whose name is hill and he's a retired firefighter andy meets him in the first chapter when he starts banging on her door because she thinks that andy is getting attacked and in fact she was just watching a movie like a scary movie really loud that's how they meet you know very like meet cute but make it creepy i don't know i really enjoyed that but at some point i was like mm, you know this is just all right but today, as I was listening and getting a little bit deeper into the story, I'm just really enjoying these character voices. There's something that I realized today about my taste in romance books. I'm coming back to romance recently. I mean, a couple of years back, it's been that I've been reading a lot more romance. But back in the day, back in my teen years, that was like my main genre. I was a big romance girl so coming back to it as an adult i'm trying to feel out what are the tropes that i like themes that i like in romance books um styles of writing and i realized that i'm not a big erotica fan like i don't really enjoy when there's a lot of sex like descriptive sex in romance stories it's kind of like a fine line because i do like smut i do like to read you know how these characters get it on <laughs> but not so much you know like not where like 50 percent of the book is the two main characters doing it i want more than that more story more like subtle ways that the characters connect yeah i don't know what's gonna happen with this one so far i don't know which way it's gonna go this definitely incorporates a lot more dirty talk even though the characters are not at that point yet in the story so i don't even know how that's gonna go down but there's a lot more sexual references in window mentioned in this book than in the previous book i read in this vlog so far i'm really liking this as i said um we have andy who is working on her podcast writing books and then her neighbor hill who like i said is a retired fi retired firefighter he's kind of trying to figure things out because he lost a part of his leg in a fire so that's why he had to retire and now he doesn't know what he wants to do with his life he's kind of like in that limbo where he's young he knows he wants to do more but he doesn't know what that is exactly because his dream was being a firefighter and he already did that enter andy who in the beginning is like trying to become friends with him and actually volunteers to show him the co-working space where she goes to do her job they have a talk and he tells her that he was the cook for um the fire station where he worked so he enjoys cooking and it's something that he misses so andy's like well you can come to the co-working space there's rooms there where you can cook where people sometimes go to film like cooking segments and cooking i guess videos he's kind of attracted to her but he doesn't think that she would be into him it seems like a lot of his self-worth was attached to him being a firefighter so i think that's interesting and you know we're gonna explore that 
storyline coming from a man's POV. I feel like I'm starting to rumble, but yeah, overall, I'm very excited to keep diving into this. <laughs> I wanted to pop in briefly to this vlog to say that I'm loving this book. I am now about 60% of the way into What If You and Me by Ronnie Lauren. For the moment, I can say that I think this is going to be a new favorite of mine. I am really loving the story, the characters, how the romance is unfolding between the two main characters i think i forgot to say on my previous update that andy is into hill who is her landlord but she has to take it slow because i think she was the victim of an abusive relationship in the past i think when she was in high school and that has really affected her and her ability to get close to other people especially you know men to trust men so this has a lot to do with that you know the fact that she gets really anxious and she has put in place a lot of boundaries when it comes to dating and so it's basically how she begins to form this connection with hill and how they both start to bring down their walls little by little which i really enjoy i really do need that emotional connection to develop between the main characters before i can be like on board with their romance and therefore enjoy the physical scenes so i'm really happy that you know with these characters they're taking their time and kind of working through their traumas i'm just having such a good time with this story but yeah i think i spot a new favorite we're gonna go out to dinner in a little bit but i'm kind of hungry so i think i'm going to get a little bit of marcelo's spaghetti i haven't been on here for a long time and that was because i was reading other things i don't think i ever did a final update for this book this ended up being a five star book my favorite so far granted i've only read two but i have started on the third book which i'm going to talk about in a little bit but yeah this is definitely a new favorite i loved it this is the second book in a series so i want to go back and read the first one and i'm waiting for the release of the third one because i really enjoyed the characters here the writing style definitely ronnie lauren is a new favorite author of mine i started reading the third book that i wanted that i wanted to read for this reading vlog and that is seven days in june by tia williams i am on i think either chapter four or chapter five at this point i was listening to a bit of the audiobook while i was cleaning and cooking marcelo's spaghetti and yeah i definitely want to read this physically uh, versus the audiobook sometimes it just takes me a while to fully get into the audiobook especially when i've started when i've just started with the book but so far i'm really loving the style of writing for this one this is about a woman named eva mercy and she has a young daughter i think her daughter is like 12 years old she's a single mom she's an erotica writer but she's kind of hit a rut she's been writing erotica professionally since she was 19 years old i think and at this point in the story she's maybe like 32 i've been trying to do the math she wants to write something else she wants to step out of her comfort zone and at the beginning of the story she gets invited to this author event she's gonna be taking someone else's place and 
she kind of feels like she doesn't have the credentials to be there but she ends up accepting and going anyway and i think it's at this event that she's gonna run into the guy that she had something to do with whose name is shane he is also an author but he writes like very different type of literature from what eva writes so yeah that's basically where i'm at i want to say like maybe 40 50 pages in but so far really enjoying it and yeah i think this definitely has the potential to be a new favorite even this early on i'm calling it that i think i could really enjoy this book hey besties and welcome back to this vlog that i haven't updated in a while like a long while i took a little break uh from reading seven days in june i want to say maybe a couple of weeks ago i started reading the hunting party by lucy folly and then i dove right into the paris apartment there is a vlog already on the channel where i talk all about my experience reading that book so i'm going to link that somewhere around here so i picked up seven days in june once again and i think i'm now on page 115 really enjoying it like i know i always say this but really with this one i have no clue no idea what i said about it or my reading experience of this book in the previous update that i did i know i did talk about it a little bit so far i'm really enjoying it i'm loving the characters i'm loving their voices how the story is told i'm loving that eva the main character is a paranormal romance erotica writer i'm really into that i mean not that genre of books because i think i haven't really read many uh, books in that um, assortment of genres but I just like that that's what she writes and she's kind of like insecure about it she feels that maybe her work is not taking is not taken seriously and she basically says she just does it in order to be able to give her daughter a good lifestyle but she does want to write a different type of fiction so i'm hoping that in this book we do get to see her realize her dream and then we have the male perspective um his name is shane hall and he's also a writer he writes well i'm not really sure i would say maybe contemporary i guess but he has done a lot better for himself shane and eva meet at an event a literary event where eva is invited and shane just happens to be there so they have a little talk like i guess they haven't seen each other in a while and it seems like they knew each other in high school and they had a bit of an intense relationship that has kind of really left huge marks on them in fact they have been writing to one another through their books like there's a character in shane's book that's inspired by eva like i think the main character and then there's a character in eva's book I think he's a vampire that is totally inspired by Shane. So like Eva's fandom is totally fangirling about this. Today it's been a day of running errands. I'm outside of Subway right now. I came to pick up lunch. But yeah, so I went to Target to pick up a few things. And while I was there, I was listening to the audiobook of Seven Days in June. And you know what? I love listening to audiobooks while I'm out running errands but i do have to say that i find that i don't pay as close attention to what i'm listening to as opposed to when i'm at home or working you know just more focused so i think i'm gonna have to go back and read like physically read a couple of those chapters that i listened to Hey guys, uh, once again, I have no idea how long it's been since I've done an update, but I'm still reading Seven Days in June by Tia Williams. Today, I went to work early. I'm back 
in my cozy clothing uh just chilling trying not to take a nap i definitely want to finish this today i just wanted to jump on here real quick to say that i became obsessed with a scene in this book i read it like three times like first when i came to that uh, part of the book i was listening on audiobook so i listened the first time then i went back and listened to it again and then i ended up reading reading it physically i just thought it was like the perfect spicy but also like super cute scene in a book like i said i still have you know a bit of a ways to go with this one but i can already feel like this is gonna be either a four or a five and at the moment it's leaning more toward a five hey besties i finally finished seven days in june it took me forever but i really loved it i think it's going to be a five star and oh marcelo wants to be on camera as well this is going to be five stars i really enjoyed it i think overall i have to say i've had a really good time doing this vlog i don't know what the purpose of reading romance books that feature writers uh semi characters was but i guess we can say from the three books that i read during this vlog i loved two rated them five stars and one i didn't really enjoy that much the roughest draft i gave that 2.5 stars so is this a sub genre of romance that i enjoy reading i think i can safely say yes i had a bit of a problem with the roughest draft but overall i really like authors being the main characters and romance stories like with the other book that i really enjoyed which was what if you and me the main character was a horror writer and i really had a fun time reading from the pov of someone who writes horror and also learning the backstory of why this main character was so fixated on writing that genre and then with seven days in june we have two authors i really enjoy um this very specific trope so i would love to read more books featuring writers as the main characters whether it's romance or any other genre in fiction thank you so much for watching thank you for joining me and i will see you in the next one bye